So we're going to be winding down uh, this this lesson on um, what is a Christian and am I one? Do am I a follower of Christ? And we've talked a lot about who God is and about salvation and about who we are in Him. Um, we talked a lot about what is faith and what does it mean to have faith um, in, in Christ and what does it mean to be a Christian. And as part of that, I'm wanting you to be introspective uh, in considering your own walk. Are you a follower of Christ? Are you following? Uh, I love that word picture of following that if, uh, let's see, come on up here, gals. So face that way. They come come back though a little bit. Okay? They're going to walk toward the door. Walk toward the door. I'm following him, right? I'm following him. He's headed this direction, and I am headed in the same direction as he is, right? So I'm following him. I'm do that again. I'm no longer following him, right? I love that word, thank you, Dallas. I love that word picture of following Christ. Um, it, it isn't a, actually, you know, obviously an actual following as I did with Dallas. But we cannot follow someone that we're moving away from. Does that make sense? We can't follow someone that we are moving away from. Uh, and so if it, if, to be a follower of Christ, to be a Christian means to follow Christ, to place our trust in Christ, to say, look, I have no only, uh, other hope than Christ. And if Christ is, as he said he is, the only way to God, then how do I respond to it? And as a believer, how do I live that out? Uh, so what should be my response? Well, the first part of this is that our lives should be characterized by love and obedience. We'll come back to that second one. But our, our lives should be characterized by love and obedience. Perfect? No, not this side of heaven. None of us will be. But characterized means that's our general posture. Uh, my husband is... Perhaps the most patient human being I've ever known. Uh, he is also, this is the way I like to uh, explain, he has to be, he's married to me. But anyway, um, so this is the way I explain Jeff, that of all the people I know, what he says he believe, believes and how he lives his life most closely match up to each other. He knows I say that. Also, I get women really mad at me. When I tell them I have never, ever, not one time, in 34 and a half years of marriage, had to pick up something after. He never leaves anything on the floor. He always puts his clothes back in the drawer. He does his own laundry. <laughs> never have to. That's a more recent thing that he does his own laundry. But, uh, so, yeah, pretty good deal of it. Um, but, uh, but it should be characterized. So, so, Characteristically, Jeff is patient. Characteristically, he is kind. Is he always that way? No, not always. But he is characterized by that patience. And so our, our lives should be characterized by love and obedience to God. We don't always live that way. But Scripture says this. Um, but when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment of, in the law? So what's the greatest commandment? What's the most important commandment? And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, the great and first commandment. The second is like it. 
You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all of the law and the prophet. Now listen, we don't love God and love people in order to be saved. But if we are saved, our lives will be characterized by love for God and love for others. Not perfectly, but it, our lives will be characterized by that. And we will desire that. We will want to love God and, and love others um, in ways that are that are meaningful, that are spirit-filled. Um, here's some verses that uh, talk about this. So in John, uh, Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Part of loving God is obeying God. Part of loving Jesus is obeying him. We love, this is from 1 John, we love because he first loved us. Here's the thing, the only reason we can love is because Jesus is love. God is love. And he first loved us. And so his love precipitated ours. Not only did his love precipitate ours, but his love enables us to love him back. And then in John 13, this is Jesus. This is the night before he is crucified. And he says this to his, just after the Last Supper, and he says this to his disciples. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The, the single most common characteristic, most noticeable uh, characteristic of a Christian is to be loved. To love others, to love God, and to love others. So, um, so then what should be my response? Our wives should be characterized by love and obedience, and the more we know God, the more we will want others to know him too. For us to just say, I'm, I'm good, so I'm good. I don't care if anyone else knows. I just I, I I've got my ticket to heaven, so I'm not I don't really care who else has. We should want those that we know, those that we love, those that we've never met to have what we have to know Christ. So the more we know God, the more we will want others to know Him too. Um, this is Jesus first calling His disciples and and um, and. Uh, Andrew and, and um, John had gone up to Jesus and said, where are you staying? And Jesus said, come and, come and see. And uh, then this happened. So one of the her two that heard John speak, that means John the Baptist, and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. And uh, uh, and so later, um, Philip joins in, and Philip finds Nathaniel, and uh, and Nathaniel says, "Can anything good come from Nazareth?" And you know what Philip says? He says, "Come and see." He uses Jesus's own words. The first thing Andrew said, "We found the Christ. What am I going to do? I'm going to go tell my brother. I want my brother to know Jesus." Um, and uh, it was, he couldn't not want others, and the disciples could not want others to come to know Christ. So the more we know God, the more we will want others to know him as well. And then we have this in Matthew 28, and Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, this is just before his ascension, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Karen Jobes says beautifully in her commentary that Jesus said, I will always be with you. And then, ironically, he left. But he hasn't really. Uh, he is still uh, alive. Uh, forevermore. So um, we have this this truth that Jesus is alive and uh, and uh, 
preparing a place for. So we're going to stop there uh, for now. Uh, and uh, when we reconvene on Friday, um, we'll have a, a time together. Uh, it'll be a um, quiet time of reflection and uh, uh, considering uh, where we are with Christ. And it will be, we'll have a, a we'll, we'll take communion together. We'll be doing with so you will have the rest of today and all of tomorrow uh, to work on your testimony.